I literally don't care about anything but improving the O-line for the offseason. This has gone on way too long. But surely, since we're getting a run game focused offense, we have to improve the O-line, right? Okay. All right. A running back. I guess you do need a running back if you're going to run the ball more. So, uh, good move. Good move. Um, all right. Um, more defensive players. Fine. Um, we kind of already have a good defense, but okay. All right. Um, receivers. Sure. I guess we need it. Um, a guard. Okay. Finally. All right. This is probably the part where we start getting a lot of offensive linemen in general. Uh, <laughs> let's get some tackles. Those are the most important ones. Any day, they're going to get some tackles now. Um, any day now. What's up, Dolphin fans, and welcome to the newest Dolphin Drawdown episode. So obviously this video is about what's happening in free agency so far, so it's very important that I state that this video is being recorded on March 16th, 2022 at 7.45 p.m., which is a Wednesday. Uh... If anything happens past that time, understand why it's not discussed in this video. Uh, but there is actually a lot to talk about up to this point. So free agency started on Monday and the Dolphins actually made some pretty good moves. Uh, so we're going to go talk about them all and talk about how I feel about them. And honestly, there's not really a move that I don't like so far. Like actually, I was kind of fine with all of them so far, really. So we'll start with the fact that they re-signed Emmanuel Ogba to four years, I think 16 million. Uh, good move, it made a lot of sense. I was really scared they were gonna lose him for a second, uh, but they get him back. He's obviously been a really good scheme fit for the Dolphins. He's probably, aside from Xavier Howard, their best player on defense, maybe their best player in general, I don't know. Um, it, it just made sense. Bring back your best players, you got the money to do it. Nothing else to really say, it just, it made sense. I'm glad Emmanuel Ogba's, Ogba's back, and uh, I hope he continues to ball out for us. The Dolphins also just got Chase Edmonds uh, from Arizona previously. He's a really good scheme fit because Mike McDaniel, of course, is from the Shanahan offense, so it's uh, gonna be a very run-heavy type of deal here, and uh, you're getting a lot of that with Chase Edmonds. He's not only just a good running back, but uh, he, he's good in the passing game as well, and I think they're going to utilize him a lot there. He's just a really good, shifty, speedy kind of back. You know, you don't need this big powerhouse like Derrick Henry or Zeke, whatever. You know, uh, just need someone nifty like that. So Chase Edmonds, it just makes sense. Nothing else to really say about that one either. Another big one we're going to talk about is Cedric Wilson from the Dallas Cowboys. This is actually a pretty big one because the Dolphins were talking about... Um, we need some a little more help at wide receiver. They're still pretty good at wide receiver. Devontae Parker is a good number one when healthy, and Jalen Waddle is now kind of turning into their best wide receiver. Uh, but again, in this Shanahan offense, you kind of need like really nice, uh, nifty speed type of receivers, and that's exactly, exactly what Wilson is going to bring to the Dolphins. Even Dak Prescott complimented him, uh, saying that he's going to be a star, something along those lines. Honestly, I don't exactly remember, but... Uh, but yeah, uh, good scheme fit. You don't always have to get these like big name receivers. Like you don't always need to get like uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, you know, OBJ, like all these people. Like sometimes you just need to get like nice speed receivers that fit the system well. And I think that's what Cedric Wilson is going to do. So big fan of this hire right here. All right, now let's talk about Teddy Bridgewater. The Dolphins got their backup quarterback. And you could maybe argue he's better than the starting quarterback. We hope that's not the case. Like, we want Tua to be the starting guy for us. But I will say, if Tua just doesn't have it, or if he gets injured, Teddy Bridgewater is a really, really good backup quarterback. I think he's going to be miles better than Jacoby Brissett last year. Um, yeah, man, he, he's been good. He's uh, not like you're, you know, you, you got to start him. But uh, he's a good backup. Uh, I think he's, a, uh, um, you know, a veteran at this point and he knows what he's doing out there he's just I mean nothing else to say he's just a solid backup I like the move a lot all right so this one Connor Williams from the Dallas Cowboys they did finally get some help on the line with right guard um, but a lot of people keep on talking about the fact that he was always penalized with the Cowboys and sure 
there were a lot of penalties. But I, I, I do still think it's worth noting that in general, he's still a really good guard and we need help. Like honestly, anything is an upgrade at this point because this O-line just really has to be improved. And also remember that Joe Philbin was the uh, offensive coordinator or the uh, O-line coordinator, coach, whatever you want to say, for the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, that would explain a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I think it's a good move. I think he's a good player in general. He's very aggressive. We need some help on the O-line. We got it. Now we just need to go for some tackles, and then I'd feel a lot better about our offense, frankly. Uh, but I like the move regardless. And the last one I'm going to talk about is Alec Ignew, a fullback from the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, at first, it's kind of like a fullback. Like, who cares? Well, in a Mike McDaniel offense, that's really going to matter because, again, they're trying to run the ball a lot more. Uh, they got their main guy with Chase Edmonds, but now they have... Uh, actually a really good fullback uh, to do some nifty things as well because they're going to want to use more than one running back, obviously. I, I think this is just an underrated hire is what I'm saying. Like, uh, I don't think you're expecting a fullback to really do a whole lot, but that's kind of the beauty of it. I think he's actually a very good one. He's very talented and he's just a good player. I, I just, it's just all these players, I can't really like say a whole lot. It just makes sense. Like it, it fits our specific offense or defense it, they didn't overpay for anyone i don't think they didn't like over uh overspend with picks or whatever it's just it, it just made sense like I, I don't know what to say like i feel like chris greer probably always was underrated he just didn't have a coach that he could see eye to eye with but maybe now he finally does or at least he has control now and we're seeing he actually is pretty good to be honest if you give him a chance uh, but yeah, just nothing to disagree with to this point, at least. Um, I, I just agree. The Dolphins are getting better, and there's nothing you can really complain about. We just, we're getting better, especially on the offense, which I'm very happy about. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think the Dolphins are going to do anything else in free agency? Obviously, they will, but, you know, what do you think they will do? Hopefully, they do something with the tackles. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, Finzo.